This is my boss locked account. The premise is simple. I've restricted this account to only getting experience from bosses, their drops, and the content related to them. That means no buying from shops, picking up items, or getting drops from monsters not related to a boss. For a more detailed rule set, then check the description, and I will also be explaining these rules when they come up in the series. Now without further ado, let's get into the video. So after just completing Tutorial Island and spawning into Lumbridge, I proceeded to drop all my items that I got from Tutorial Island. I then proceeded to do my next level strat of speedrunning Jad. I minigame teleported to the Tazar fight pits. I just don't understand why it took Settled over 24 hours to get here on his speedrun. What was he doing? Like literally running through a swamp? Anyway, the fight caves was my plan for my first bit of experience, with the first wave spawning a Tazar kick. These little fire bats have some pretty low stats, but are still incredibly hard to hit for a level 3. These bats also had a max hit of 4, so that really wasn't helping me either. So at the start, I was going in, running up, hitting the bats, and then dying and repeating. I was getting one hit in every attempt, and each attempt was about 4 minutes in length due to the 3 minute wait time between each run. I have no idea why there is a 3 minute time at a re-enter, but oh well I suppose. So from my few runs, I decided to calculate the XP an hour that this was. One fight cave's attempt equaled 4 XP in 4 minutes, which equaled 1 XP per minute or 60 XP per hour from level 1 to 4 strength. 4 strength equaled a new max hit of 2, so that would increase my XP by more than double. I also needed 7 strength to be able to hit a 2 in other combat styles, so I was looking at about 5 hours for level 4 strength. But, then I made my first discovery. It was possible to flinch the bats. This made it so I didn't have to keep dying and then waiting every 3 minutes which was great. I'm so glad I discovered this early on, or I would have spent a fair while here. With the new flinching method, I was getting 144 XP an hour. This was more than double the previous XP per hour. That meant I only needed two hours to get four strength now. During my strength training, I was also checking the eligibility for my random events at every one hour of playtime-ish, and then I would go back into the fight caves. I didn't receive one the first time I checked, but then I just headed back into the fight caves and kept doing my strength training. There we go, I just now got 4 strength. This has now doubled the amount of experience I'll get an hour here. So I was previously getting 144 XP an hour flinching. I will now be getting about 290 XP an hour while flinching. That is uh, pretty good to hear, pretty low numbers, but damn it sounds great for this account when I was expecting 60 XP an hour flinching. So I've done some further DPS calculations and it's shown that I need about 14 strength to now hit a 3 and about 15 attack to give myself about a 1 in 4 chance of hitting. So the goal is now 14 strength and 15 attack and whatever my HP ends up from that. Something I also did just discover is that the Tazar Kex have a ring of recoil effect to reflect melee damage. They also have double the defense of the bats. So to make this better for me, if I kill wave 2 which has 2 bats and then move on to wave 3 which has a Tazar Kek, it's better for me to actually just die straight away and wait the 3 minutes and then head back in and do wave 1 and 2 and repeat. So I was just out checking for random events again, and at the 1 hour 5 minute mark, I actually got a Dr. Jekyll random event. And from that, I got a strength pot. So I decided to use the strength pot once I got 6 strength to boost above 7 strength and train attack 1 level for an extra 2% increase in accuracy. Doesn't sound like much, but with the amount of hits I'm doing and how many misses I'm getting, 2% is actually going to be a lot over the long haul. Um, I skipped all the boring parts, now I'm at 7 strength, so I decided I'd swap to attack for a little bit. It should be about 6 to 7 hours for 15 attack, and just another 3 hours for 14 strength. So it should be 9 to 10-ish hours of flinching, which sounds so great. Man, I love flinching. So after I just died to the third wave, I just waited around for a little bit, then I got a freaky forest at random. So I went in, I killed the thing obviously, and I came back out, and I got this really sick hat from this. Man, this thing looks good. This is 100% uh, my fashion scape for as long as this account goes for. Yep, for as long as it goes for, this is part of my fashion scape. So I was just looking up some damage calculations from Wintertop, because that is my goal right now, is to get out from here and go train up my fire making. And what I want is to actually have 13 HP as my max HP before I enter Wintertot. Because once I get 14 HP, Wintertot actually hits me for threes instead of twos. And because I can't get any warm clothing, it's going to add up a fair amount. The only warm clothing I can get is from Winter Tot, and that's going to take a while. So I've had a change of plans. I'm going to be heading to my next boss now. I'm heading there because it can actually help me unlock a heap of skills, and at 12 HP, I'm still going to have to be flinching here, so I'm still going to be getting a little bit of HP XP, and I kind of don't want to push it over to the 13 any further. 
So just from looking at this, you're probably able to tell where I'm heading next, and that is to the Chambers of Zarek. Um, getting through this swamp here that I'm at is the most dangerous area for me to get through to get to the Chambers. I have to run past Lizardman, which can max hit a 7, and with 12 HP and no food, I don't like my chances. Plus, they can also poison me in the process. But if I want to progress my account, I need to get past them. But for the best chances, I need to wait here for 100% run energy, and then I need to run past them so I can get to Chambers. So I actually got extremely lucky going through this swamp. I got hit three times for zeros. I was flicking my prayer, but that would not have done that much. So I got, I tanked three hits and I only got hit once for a two. I did get poisoned, but if you're wondering why I go into my interface just here, because when you go into your interface like this, you don't actually take any poison damage, but you do regen HP. You just take the poison damage when you come out of it. So the plan is to just go back into this interface, regen my HP up, and then just run along to the raids. And that's what I did. There we go, so I made it all the way to Chambers with no issues. I totally didn't die the first time and I had to run all the way back to the swamp. Not at all. That totally didn't happen. Uh, anyway, so I quickly entered the raid and left so I could cure myself of poison and here we are. Now I'm going to talk about Chambers of Zarek and explain what this does for my account because it makes a boss only account actually possible. Chambers of Zarek is usually a late game piece of content for most accounts, but for this account, it gives me some of the best or only training methods for some skills. Chambers unlocks seven skills for me to train and is the only way for me to train two of them. The skills unlocked by Chambers is fishing, cooking, fire making, wood cutting, thieving, hunter, and farming. What makes all of these possible is this guy here, the scavenger. The scavenger has one of the most unique drop tables in RuneScape due to it dropping mainly tools and is the only way for me to obtain most of these tools this early. Now let's go over the uses for these items. The lockpick is used in raids to pick open the chests in some of the rooms and grant 40 thieving XP each chest. This is my only way to train thieving. The butterfly net lets you catch bats in the resource room. These can be used for food in the raid and are used to replace fishing spots in resource rooms. So either you get a room with bats or fishing spots. This is my only hunter XP method. The fishing rod and cave worms are what is used to catch fish in the resource rooms. The axe and tinderbox are used for lighting fires to cook the bats or fish on. The axe and tinderbox are also used for the ice demon puzzle room, but I will show how this is done later on. The last skill farming is unlocked in the resource area. In here you can find a rake, a seed dipper and a spade all on the wall. All the tools that you can get in raids can be taken outside of raids. I'll be able to train some of these skills outside of raids if I get the required drops from other bosses later. Now, back to scavengers. Scavengers defensive stats aren't too high, but they can max hit a 13, so I will have to watch for that. The plan is to flinch them and get all the required tools, then go out and bank them and only bring in the fishing rod, tinderbox, and axe. So I will have an open inventory for the 35 fishing grind to unlock Temporos. So I started flinching the first scavenger and then an update started. So I just wanted tools at this point because you can at least take them out of the raids. And then my first drop was bones, which uh, might sound simple, but I actually overlooked it when I was talking about them before because this is like really my only monster that I can kill or boss that I can kill that's going to drop me bones for a fair while. So that's actually kind of important. But I also got bait and bait is one of the things you cannot take out of raids, which is not, I didn't want that. I just didn't want it. So I got my second scavenger kill and it was a uh, plank drop. And um, I wrote something here. One sec, just let me check what it was. Um, 
Ah, yeah, my note says, uh, not pog. I just did the calculations and I'm going to need about a thousand bait for 35 fishing. So I'm going to start getting all this bait and it's going to take me many, many hours. So you got to know that each kill takes me on average about 10 minutes to get one kill. And it's probably about a one in three drop to actually get some bait off these guys. So getting a thousand bait is going to take me a lot of hours, but I'm going to do that. And I'm going to get 35 fishing in me back. I'm not going to bore you with all the flinching. I'm just going to do it. There we go, there is 35 fishing. This took about 20 hours with all the flinching. From doing this, I got a heap of levels in other skills too. And I also wanna show you some things that happened or some stuff that I discovered during this fishing grind as well. The first thing I discovered was it looks like I need both the fishing and cooking level to catch the next level of fish. So basically this means that I got a bit less XP overall and had to flinch the scavenger for a bit longer. I caught nearly a whole inventory just thinking I was getting unlucky, but I thought I might need to leave and re-enter because Chambers takes your stats on entry, and then decided what resources that you can gather in that specific raid, and won't take level ups into account. So I tested this, and yeah, I confirmed it. After leaving and re-entering, I can now catch the next level of fish. I honestly thought that me not being able to catch the fish was a glitch, or it wasn't added to the game as an oversight, because who is dumb enough to enter raids with 15 cooking and fishing? I also went back to the fight caves to train my strength up to level 13 so that I could hit threes with my new best in slot, the Iron Axe. I got 14 HP in the process, which means Winter Tot now hits threes on me with no warm items. But if I get four warm items from Winter Tot, I will only take one damage still. So it's not that bad. After getting my strength level up, I went back to raids to find that I had an Ice Demon as my first room. I haven't had this happen over multiple resets trying to get a scavenger and resource area next to each other. So... I decided that I'm going to put the fishing training on hold and start the 50 fire making grind. So I started with 13 wood cutting and 16 fire making that I got from just chopping trees and lighting the fires to cook my fish on. Then my computer decided to crash at 32 fire making and 24 wood cutting. So back to fishing until 35 fishing, I suppose. Now we're back at this moment. It took me 27 hours to unlock my first killable boss being Temporos. I killed 89 scavengers and collected the bones to use on the chaos altar in the process. The next thing to do now is to go out and keep resetting my raid until I get an Ice Demon puzzle room as the first boss room. It's only taken five minutes to get this Ice Demon room, which was heaps quicker than what I thought it would be. Now it's time to start the fire making grind. I'm starting with 32 fire making and 24 wood cutting. I estimated about two hours for 50 fire making. Now it's time that I explain the Ice Demon fire making training method. First, you need to cut a full inventory of kindling and go drop it at the side of the brazier. Pick up one kindling from the stack and light that in the brazier in front of you. Then move to the other stack and pick up one and light the other brazier. The imp will keep putting out the fire so you can keep going back and forth lighting each side with one kindling in your inventory. Only use one kindling at a time because you will get 92 XP with one kindling or 92 XP with 27 kindling. Also, if you put more kindling than one in the brazier and don't swap between them, then the boss will start defrosting and wake up. This will cause him to kill you and you will ruin this ice demon so you will have to find a new raid to continue. It's actually a really easy and quick method when you get the ice demon room. I believe that this is quicker than fire making XP when chopping logs and lighting them yourself on the outside. The ice demon's interesting because when chopping trees you actually have a chance of getting more than one kindling depending on your woodcutting level. At level 24 woodcutting, you can get an extra kindling, then every 12 levels after that, you can also get an extra kindling. And with this, your XP an hour increases in fire making a bit, but it does decrease the amount of woodcutting XP you get, since cutting one kindling is 30 XP, but getting two at once is 45 XP. It also kind of feels like the Ice Demon is just kind of like a winter top beta. You chop kindling, you light it in a brazier for some points and XP, like it's it literally just sounds like winter top. There we go, that is 50 fire making. I started at about 42k XP an hour, but increased to 45k with higher wood cutting levels due to getting more kindling. It took about one hour, 45 minutes to get from 30 fire making to 50 fire making. So if you're going from level one to 50 fire making, it would only take about two hours if you do the ice demon method, which is pretty damn good. Now that I've finished with raids temporarily, 
But now I can actually move on to another boss and get my first KC on this account after about 29 hours. Now I'm going to head to Temporos to get some food since I will need a fair amount for Winter Tot since I can't obtain any warm clothing before getting it from Winter Tot itself. Finally made it to Temporos. Just had to home tally and walk around the desert and take the ferry just near the Alcaharid Bank to get here. Now I'm going to talk about Temporos and what makes this such a good boss for me because it's more than what you might first think. Now the obvious is the fishing and cooking XP plus the fish that I'll get from this boss. Some other things that you can get from Temporos is construction XP from repairing totem poles. Doing this will give four times your construction level and experience. This is great, since it means I can train construction without the need of planks, and it's just some nice free XP. The next thing that is interesting about Temporos is some of the rewards. The rewards that I'll be going for are the Tome of Water, with a 1 in 1600 chance, and the Soak Pages being 1 in 54, getting anywhere from 5 to 9 at a time. Next would be the Casket, which is different from the normal casket you might get from Big Net Fishing or Mystery Boxes. This casket has some amazing loot for this account, but it is a 1 in 20 drop chance. And of course, the Dragon Harpoon. But with that being a 1 in 8,000 chance, which is the same as the pet, it would be something I would be happy about getting, but not a massive deal if I didn't. Let's talk about the reward casket some more. It offers some amazing items. Truly amazing. You can get a nice amount of rune armor with a rune med, rune full helm, and rune chain body being a 1 in 26, and all the rest being 1 in 230. Some other good items include the materials table. 50 to 100 gold or silver bars is a huge amount of crafting XP. And with them being bars, that means I don't have to smith them, which is the skill I am currently lamping and won't be able to use for a very long time. Something else on the materials might seem useless at first glance, but is great for me, and that is opals. With a cut opal and silver, I can make opal rings at level 1 crafting. This is huge. There are not many level 1 crafting options available to me, but this is one of them. But this does rely on me getting two drops with a 1 in 26 chance each. And last but certainly not least, the tertiary table. This table holds clue scrolls, and mainly the easy and medium clues. This is the only way for me to be able to get easy and medium clues, since all other bosses I will be fighting only drop hard clues or above. Easy and medium clues can unlock a whole range of different content for me, and give me heaps of quality of life upgrades, being any of the god robes, magic staffs, any weapon and being one of the few ways for me to obtain low level runes such as mind runes. Also from Temporis, you can get planks. This will really help with construction and is the only way for me to get normal planks. Construction will be a huge part of this account, with it unlocking many new skills later on in the account. I will talk more about construction later when it actually gets enough levels to be relevant. There is also one other extremely useful item for this account, but I'll let you all guess it and I'll explain it all later when it becomes relevant. Okay, now that's the overview for Temporis and what it actually does for this account. Now let's get into it and get our first boss KC. I didn't mention it yet, but I have to grab a net from this guy to get my rewards, but the net will be dropped straight after I get my rewards each time. Got a casket from the first reward permit, which is a 1 in 20 chance. Then got cash from the casket, which is very helpful since I was going to do just a couple KC here, then go to Wintertot to get some KC till I got cash, since it is more common from there. I wanted the cash to buy a house so that I can get construction XP from Temporis and Wintertot, because without a house you actually can't get XP in construction from here or Wintertot. So I went and made one of the other exceptions on this account, and that was buying a house and picking up a saw. I made these an exception because, as I said earlier, the house unlocks some skills for me and would have locked too much content behind it from me not getting it. The reason why I had to get the saw was because there is no other way to get the saw besides item spawns, buying it from shops, or the tool store in your house. But without a saw, you can't build it. Or build anything else in your house for that matter without one. Anyway, now that I've got a house, it's time to go back to Temporis and get 50 more rewards. Alright, I collected 50 reward permits from Temporis. Pretty chill boss since he can't die here. Much better than flinching for bait for fishing XP too. Let's see what we get from the reward pool. Okay, this is sick. I got an easy clue. 
So let's do that and we'll see what we get. There's a few good things that I can get from this easy clue. What I'm mainly kind of hoping for is any kind of staff or a weapon. Even if I got a staff, it wouldn't be that bad because I could use it as a weapon and it's definitely going to be better than an iron axe right now. I'll tell you that much. So let's open it and see what we get. Holy shit, I actually got myself a weapon. That black longsword is going to be so much better than this axe. It's like I got 10 attack knowing that I was going to get a black weapon or something. But damn, that's going to be so helpful for when I actually have to train my stats and I don't have to use an iron axe. Next, I actually got a rune med helm and a hard clue in my next casket. But I couldn't complete the hard clue, which kind of sucked because I needed, I think, the recipe for disaster quest to unlock it. Not sure, but I needed it. From my next few caskets, I got some useless jewelry, uh, but I did get some sapphire necklaces, which when I get some magic levels later, I can actually make some games necklaces, which will be very helpful because they are pretty nice to have. Now that I've opened up all the caskets, I'm going to head back to Temporis and get another 50 reward points and then start fishing all them up and see what I get from it. These will be the last points I get before I head off to Temporis because getting 50 more points should get me enough fish to be able to last me till 99 fire making. Something I notice when I'm in Temporis is actually when you're harpooning Temporis to do damage to him, you actually gain three run energy back per damage you do in the in this Temporis phase. Which is funny because from what I could tell, the wiki doesn't mention this anywhere at all from what I found. I had no idea that this was a thing. But yeah, I just thought that was interesting and I might share it. Okay, let's see what I get from these last reward permits now. Okay, I didn't get anything much. I got some planks um, and, of course, some food. I got a little bit less food now because my fishing's leveled up into a different higher bracket. So all the mackerel that I was getting previously, I'm not getting anymore. So I have a little bit less food, but I think this should last me for Winter Tot. So it should be fine with this. So I'm actually going to head off to Winter Tot now. So I just had a change of plans. I'm actually going to go use the fishing bait that I got from Temporis and go fishing while I edit. I can use the fishing bait since it was obtained as a reward from the boss. And since I'm converting something from the boss into something else, which makes it usable by my rules. But, for example, if I went to go out and chop trees with an axe obtained from a boss, I wouldn't be allowed since it doesn't use any materials from a boss. So, next episode, I will be at Winter Tot. So if you've made it this far, hopefully you've actually enjoyed the video. I'd like to hear what you think in the comments since this was the first kind of RuneScape video I've done and the first video on this channel. Mention something about how I could improve maybe or something that you liked or you might want to see me do again. I really don't feel like doing that fishing level up thing I did in raids. Uh, just say you hated that so I never have to do that again because that took way too long. Um, but yeah, next time I'm going to subject myself and lock myself in what's called the Wintertop Prison. So get ready for that next episode. It might take a while to come out because I'm going to be staying in Winter Tot until I get 99 fire making. Or if I don't get the Tome of Fire by then, I'm staying there until I get that Tome of Fire. Anyway, I'll hopefully see you on the next episode. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss it and tell me what you think about this video in the comments. Or also ask me any questions that you have about this account and I'll be happy to answer them because there is some things you might want to... There is some things that weren't explained in this episode that will get explained later on. But if you're curious, just ask a question and I'll answer it. Anyway, thank you for watching.